وأوحينا إلى أم موسى أن أرضعيه فإذا خفت عليه فألقيه في بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا وبعد All praise and thanks are due sorry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Choices, peace, blessings and salutations upon our master and exemplar Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Subhanallah, the month of Ramadan is going by so quickly The days are flying, the nights are flying We are currently at verse number 8 in our discussion of Surah Al-Qasas uh, it's not only going to be about Surah Al-Qasas, but as I said before, this is one of the places in the Qur'an where you get a uh, chronological format of the life of Nabi Musa to a degree, uh, ta'ala. <clears throat> so, previously, um, the mother of Nabi Musa, alayhi salatu wasalam, put uh, the baby, Nabi Musa, into a basket or a box or whatever it was and sent him down the river to protect him because... What was what was happening around it was that the soldiers were coming and they were going to be taking all the male babies and killing them, as we said previously. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then inspired her, look, do this, he's going to be a prophet and we're going to return him to you. Uh, you know, and this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wahi that, or his, his uh, inspiration that came to her. In this verse, Allah says, فَالْتَقَطَهُ آلُ فِرْعَوْنَ لِيَكُونَ لَهُمْ عَدُوًّا وَحَزَنَا Subhanallah, uh, we said that this, this story is going to be defined by the phrase against all odds. Against all odds, instead of dying, drowning, um, somebody else, you know, finding the baby, the baby being washed up uh, by the riverbank somewhere. No, who should find the baby? فَالْتَقَطَهُ So found him, آلُ فِرْعَوْنِ The family of Fir'aun, specifically, the wife of Fir'aun لِيَكُونَ لَهُمْ عَدُوَّ وَحَزَنَا So that he may become for them an enemy وَحَزَنَا And as a means of grief A cause of grief Subhanallah This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's system That of all the people It was the wife of Fir'aun Who found the baby And this is all part of Allah's plan So you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted Nabi Musa to be found by the wife of Fir'aun so that he can, you know, infiltrate into the family and actually become the means of that family's downfall. And that Allah says specifically he's going to be a means of, of uh, enmity or he's going to be an enemy for them. Wa hazana is going to be a cause of grief. Inna Fir'aun wa Haman, indeed Pharaoh and Haman, his leading uh, minister. Wa junudahuma and their armies. كانوا خاطئين They were sinners They made uh, deliberate uh, mistakes And they also Sorry, not mistakes They deliberately sinned And they also fell into a point That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to put them into check But look at the way You know uh, Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam Could have come into the uh, home of Fir'aun in various ways He could have just come as an emissary Or he could have just been a stranger But Allah wanted that this very baby that is going to now be picked up by the wife of Fir'aun was to grow up in his home and that very baby, that child would then become the enemy of Fir'aun وَقَالَتِ امْرَأَةُ Fir'aun and the wife of Fir'aun then says now the wife of Fir'aun, her name was Asiya she's an important figure because she's got a unique position in the Qur'an uh, Allah praises her tremendously in the Qur'an in a different place in the Qur'an Allah speaks about Sayyida Maryam and Allah speaks about her and the Prophet ﷺ taught us that she was one of the best wom women to have ever uh, lived in this earth <clears throat> it's very important that we get a name right it's not Asiya which would be a sinner that would literally mean a female sinner but Asiya and Asiya despite being the wife of one of the worst people ever to have lived she was one of the best people ever to have lived. Subhanallah. Imagine that. Um, some of us complain about our spouses, husbands, complain about their wives, wives about their husbands. But I don't think any of us can compare to this couple where you have the best of the best and the worst of the worst. Subhanallah. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, alone knows why that was. But today we can derive a lesson therefrom, and that is you do not need to be defined by the person in your life. Um, you don't need to be defined by your wife, by your husband, etc. And despite their mistakes, you can still be an absolutely brilliant person. وَقَالَتِ امْرَعَةُ فِرْعَوْنَ So as he had said to Fir'aun, كُرَّةُ عَيْنٍ لِي SubhanAllah. كُرَّةُ عَيْنٍ We spoke about this expression in the, verse, in the dua. رَبَّنَا هَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا كُرَّةَ أَعْيُنٍ The coolness of our eyes. Here she says to Fir'aun that I found the coolness of my eyes in this baby. Um, I find comfort in him. So clearly she took an immediate liking to this child. وَلَكْ And I'm also seeing the coolness of, of, of eyes for you, Fir'aun. لا تقتلوه. Do not kill him. Do not kill him. Because of course Fir'aun would know that this baby was uh, put down the river so that he wouldn't be killed because he was one of the Israelites. Asa ayyanfa'ana. She says to Fir'aun, appealing to his, his consciousness and appealing to, to his greed, in fact, that perhaps he could be of benefit to us. You know, maybe he can work for us, etc. But then she pushes it even further. She says, Aw natakhidahu waladan. Or we can adopt him, we can take him as a, as a son. وَهُمْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ And then Allah says, but they did not perceive. They did not know what was really going on. So what was really going on is that Allah wanted all of this to take place. And Allah uses this amazing woman to take this amazing child to become an amazing prophet in the home of the worst of people. And the story continues. وَأَصْبَحَ فُؤَادُ أُمِّ مُوسَى فَارِغًا إن كادت لتبدي به لولا الربطنا على قلبها لتكون من المؤمنين. Then the heart, the fuad of the mother of Musa became farigan, became empty. This is an expression. It's an idiom that indicates that she she could, you know, we can describe it as she was completely consumed by her grief or by her thoughts of Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. In kadat la bihi. In ya means a form of emphasis. So she kadat, she almost la bihi, she almost manifested it. In other words, she almost came forth and said, Listen, I'm actually the mother. That's my child. Give my child back. And it's understandable what mother in her right mind wouldn't do this. But she was under strict instruction by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only instruction, but also because she was obedient to Allah, look at the comfort that Allah gives her. لَوْلَا أَرَّبَطْنَا عَلَىٰ قَلْبِهَا Had it not been that we, Allah, strengthened her heart. We, Allah, strengthened her heart. The word rabd means to tie something together. Right? So if you say rabata, it's to tie something together. I'm sure you've heard of the words uh, ribat, for example, <coughs> and murabit. <coughs> But Allah Azza wa Jal strengthened her heart. We can learn from this that in our times of anguish, in our times of despair, in our times of hopelessness, in our times of depression and sadness, if we remain true to the law of Allah, to the uh, wisdom of Allah, to the instruction of Allah, we could receive our contentment directly from Allah. And we also learn that we would give in to our human nature we would, give, we would give in to, to those things that we would consider normal and understandable, you know, just instinctively, without any, uh, without any hesitation or reluctancy, if it's not for Allah Ta'ala intervening and strengthening our hearts. We also learn that strengthening of the heart comes from Allah. Yes, we, we should do what we need to do, you know, meditate, make dhikr, um, seek counsel, seek therapy, etc. But inevitably, your heart will only be strengthened by Allah. لَوْلَا أَرَّبَطْنَا عَلَىٰ قَلْبِهَا Had it not been that we strengthened her heart. So she wanted to go and tell them that, listen, I'm the mother, give my child. And then Allah says, now we strengthen her heart. لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ So that she may be from among the believers. And this uh, promise that Allah Ta'ala gives her, that you know, strengthening her heart, is so that she remains true to the instruction that Allah Ta'ala had given her. And by remaining true to the instruction, she is of the believers. Now, there's a, there's a beautiful element that we can learn in this verse about Arabic. The amazing um, 
nuances of meaning that we find in the Arabic language. I'd like you to take note of the translation here for a second. So the translation reads, And the heart of Moses' mother became empty of all else. She was about to disclose the matter concerning him, had we not bound fast her heart. <clears throat> so if you look at that, you will see that there's two mentions of the word heart. And the heart of Moses, the first instance, the second instance is, we uh, had we not bound fast her heart, had we not strengthened her heart. These two instances are identical in the English translation. And in, I think, every translation, they'll be identical. But let's just take a moment to look at the Arabic. And the Arabic says, وَأَصْبَحَ فُؤَادُ أُمِّ مُوسَى The fuad, the heart, so the word for, for heart there is fuad, became empty. إِنْ كَادَتْ لَتُوْبِذِي بِهِ لَوْلَا أَرْرَبَطَنَا عَلَى قَلْبِهَا Upon her heart. Here the word is qalb. So fuad and qalb in the Arabic, but in the English it's heart and heart. Because in the English there are no nuances of meaning for this word regardless of its context. But in the Arabic, there are nuances of meaning. And what gets lost in translation are these nuances. If it had meant exactly the same as the English, then it would simply have read, وَأَصْبَحَ فُؤَادُ أُمِّ مُوسَى And then, لَوْلَا أَرَّبَطَنَا عَلَى فُؤَادِهَا But it doesn't work that way, because the meanings, the levels of meaning would be lost. We learn that when the heart becomes completely, uh, you know, submerged into this, this negative sphere, and um, she can't process anything else besides thoughts of Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, and she, her heart is just one on, on one track. Allah uses the word fuad. And then we notice that when Allah gives her a change of heart, then Allah uses the word qalb, because he says he strengthened her heart. So she gets away from that, that despair, she gets away from that, that consumption of thought, and she changes, she gets strength of heart. And here the word that is used is qalb. Because the word qalaba or qalb literally uh, comes from the word to turn, qalaba. If something turns, if something, if something changes, then it, it's called a qalb. So the Arabic word for heart that we normally use, which is qalb, not kalb, by the way, which means dog, very subtle, um, it indicates that the heart constantly changes. So the point in mentioning all of this was that the beauty of, uh, of these nuances that these diff slight, you know, very, very slight differences in these words gets lost when you only understand it through the English. And my reason for pointing that out is so that everyone listening to this and watching this right now can make the intention that we would strive to learn more Arabic. If it is not that we can learn it to the extent where we understand the entire Quran, then for the very least understand some of the Quran. And we have no excuse it's just a matter of making the intention and making effort towards that intention. Formal, full-time learning would be the best. Part-time if not. But if not that, then some-time learning. You know, now and then, learn a bit more about Arabic. Increase your knowledge, inshallah. And of course, mediums such as this would definitely assist you. وَقَالَتْ لِأُخْتِهِ قُصِّي So, she, the mother of Nabi Musa, says to his sister. His sister's name is Maryam, by the way. He says to her, go and follow him. So she watched and she, she kept follow. But from a, from a distance, you know, she didn't like follow him right there. She just kept the distance and she kept watch uh, down, the, down the river Nile where this basket is going. And then she saw them picking him up and she saw that they were talking about him, etc. But they didn't know that this young girl uh, is following him or what the relationship is. The verses continue. وَحَرَّمْنَا عَلَيْهِ الْمَرَاضِعَ مِنْ قَبْلِ Now here's where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals some of his wisdom. Uh, just think about this for a second. Allah says we prohibited upon him, Abi Musa, here not haram as in, uh, or prohibited as in, uh, it's not permissible for him. But rather we made it um, repulsive to him. الْمَرَاضِعَ مِنْ قَبْلِ All forms of, of witnesses. We've, we've made it completely uh, unpalatable for, for the baby. So Nabi Musa wouldn't drink, or wouldn't latch onto any woman. Uh, he would refuse any food, any milk, or any form of nourishment from everyone. And this is because Allah Ta'ala had made it such. Why would Allah do this? The only person 
who could feed Nabi Musa was his mother. Allahu Akbar. فقالت, now the sister comes out of the woodwork. She comes out from the sideline. And she says, هَلْ أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِ بَيْتٍ Shall I inform you of a family? I remember she can't reveal to them that she's actually his sister. And uh, she knows the mother. So she says, Oh, um, I know a family who's capable of doing this. يَكْفُلُونَهُ لَكُمْ they will be able to look after him for you. So this is a common practice in ancient times where uh, there would be a witness from a different family or a family altogether like the Prophet ﷺ with uh, Halima Sa'diya. She raised him. Similarly, uh, this girl is saying, you know, I know a, a family who could, who could take care of the baby for you and could feed the baby for you. وَهُمْ لَهُ نَاصِحُونَ And she motivates her answer. She says, this family will really be good to him. They will be nasih from the word nasihah. They will be sincere towards him. They will be um, kind-hearted. They will be good-willed towards him. And in this way, فَرَدَدَنَاهُ إِلَىٰ أُمِّ مُوسَىٰ And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, got the baby back to the mother. فَرَدَدَنَاهُ إِلَىٰ أُمِّهِ We returned him, the baby, إِلَىٰ أُمِّهِ to his mother. كَيْ تَقَرَّ عِينُهَا so that her eyes may become cooled once more. So that she could be finding comfort in the baby once more. But Allahu Akbar, you know, think of our own lives. Think of our current situation. We can never... The Qur'an is unique because the Qur'an tells us about why certain things happen. But in our own situation, we just don't know until uh, we can see it retrospectively. So when this whole COVID-19 thing started happening... Uh, I'm sure many of us felt a great sense of unease and so forth. But then as time goes by, you know, all the pros and cons become manifest. And of course, the cons are horrible. We beg of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take this bala, this test away, to make us successful through it. But we also thank Him for the favors that it brings. And there are so many, you know, where do we begin? Uh, I think it, what sums it up is the Arabic expression, an ni'matu idha fuqidat urifat. A favor is really known when it's taken away. We have appreciated our families more. We have grown closer as a family unit at home. Even our distant relatives we are unable to visit. You know, we perhaps didn't even bother with them. We didn't visit them. We didn't speak to them. But now all of a sudden we are Zoom calling them, Skyping them, you know, messaging them. We've become more compassionate. We, we've had amazing results from, you know, no khamar. And uh, that's something that speaks for itself. So many things. Nature has really rejuvenated itself outside because we wouldn't dare to, to disturb it. And we don't know. On the day of Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may perhaps tell us this is why uh, this pandemic took place. This is why this virus was created, etc. But that's on a macro scale. On a micro scale, in our own lives, how often do we undergo certain things that, you know, if we were to describe them, we would describe them as horrible, as difficult, as painful. But then we look back retrospectively a few years down the line and we say, wow, you know what, if that didn't happen, then this, that and the other. Now, of course, we can't do this in a negative way. Uh, you know, if only I did this and if only I did that, then I would have been more successful because the prophets are some warned us against doing that. But, you know, sometimes we could perhaps not get a job that we were trying to get or applied for. And then later on, we come to discover that, you know what, if I got that job, then all of these opportunities would have been missed out on. So look at how Allah returned Nabi Musa to his mother. And in that, there's a beautiful lesson that we can all learn, inshallah ta'ala. Um, and then Allah says, وَلَا تَحْزَنَ So that you do not grieve, so that you do not become, you know, get into despair. So Allah clearly doesn't want people to fall into despair or into depression. وَلِتَعْلَمَ And so that you know, أَنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقٌ That the promise of Allah is true. They need, Allah Ta'ala needed to establish in their lives, in the heart of Nabi Musa's mother and his family, uh, that you can trust Allah, that God is to be trusted. I mean, subhanAllah, she really um, put her life on the line, her son's life on the line, and she trusted Allah, and Allah wanted to establish that, and he did by showing her that Allah, in fact, keeps true to his promise. وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ But most people, لا يعلمون They don't know, they don't realize it. خير إن شاء الله that uh, really started unfolding the story now and we can proceed again next time. جزاكم الله خيرا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد سبحان الله وبحمد سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.